black is beautiful. The black body is beautiful. Dara here. Everyone has a story. Here's mine. To be black in the Baltimore of my youth was to be naked before the elements. I wanted to pursue things. I was admitted to Howard University, but formed and shaped by the Mecca. The Mecca is a machine crafted to capture and concentrate the dark energies of all African peoples and inject them directly into the student body. In America, it is traditional to destroy the black body. I'm sorry that I cannot save you. I have always wanted you to attack every day of your brief, bright life in struggle. Struggle for your grandmother and grandfather. Struggle for the memory of your ancestors. Struggle for your name. We have made something down here. They made us into a race. We made ourselves into a people. Yeah. America the ugly, this country is deep to say the least As from Louisville, Kentucky to L.A. to the east With a race been on, but recently I've been making peace With the fact black bodies are worth more of their deceit Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone You're watching the MLK Show Thank you so much for being here with me I'm Mimi Jones Today we have a special guest I'm so happy to, that you made the time to be here today we have executive producer, director of the new film coming out called Between the World and Me, which was inspired by a great book written by the author, ta Coates. We have Camilla Forbes in the house. Yay! Hey, everybody. First of all, thank you, Mimi, for having me on your show. Um, of no, I just love being in your orbit at any point, so. Girl, my orbit could be crazy. It might be <laughs> rotating the opposite way that could be scary so hold on <laughs> thank you so much though for being here i know um you have a lot going on the uh the drop of this movie is actually coming out in about 24 hours so you know you must be so excited it i i am you know you know it's it's funny like when you um sit with a project and it's in your cocoon and in your like safety net of your kind of creative counsel and 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 then you've got to release it and let it off to the world it can be really scary um and 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 there's a little anticipation but honestly Mimi I am so proud of the work that we all did on this production and 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 yeah we were making the film since July but quite frankly this journey of adaptation started five years ago and you've been a key part of that journey um from yeah from New York staging it in Washington, DC, then also taking it to the Kennedy Center, then back to New York and then Atlanta. I mean, you've been a part of all of that, that, that whole journey, um, you, Nate and Jason. And so um, it's really incredible now to see it in another form and share it with the world now. Oh, that that is so awesome. And it is always a pleasure working with you. Um, you to me are, I mean, we're not, we're not talking about age here. It, it kind of doesn't matter, but it is so important to know that younger producers that are coming up, you know, in the house are just in place and they are speaking the truth. They, they are making sure that the view that is shown on us, the light that is shown us is, is right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like kind of when I'm watching some movies, when I was growing up, it, you had to have like a certain tone color in the in the lead role or you know you are really just showing all sides yeah. of, of the beauty of the black the black person and it's it's just it's i feel really honored i feel really proud good i i you know you always hope that everyone who's had a hand in it um which is you know especially with film it becomes so many people really are able to feel proud about the the product that we create, right? The, the end um, result. And yeah, you know, it's funny you talk about beauty because that was a really big part of like, I think the visual direction, right? Is how do we make sure to show each 
the uniqueness of all of who we are as a people, diasporically, um, from all the different shades, shapes, all of that. Like we wanted to make sure to celebrate that visually um, from how we shot everyone to archival, the kind of archival we use, the home movies, the home videos, the Instagram posts that we were able to pull from really just really it kind of really showed the full tapestry you know I wanted the film to feel like you know almost like you're opening like a black family album you know what I mean like you all got that album from like generations on generations on generations so um you know it was an exciting story to uh to 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 do that with so uh yeah it was a really fun time visually but a lot of fun oh man it seems like you know I mean because you were able to capture the dark sides, you know, sometimes we see, like, I, I get this a lot when I travel and I watch news from overseas, like in Japan, sometimes mm -hmm. I would um, see the news and it would just capture like, you know, be careful going past, you know, 125th street. Well, now it would be like, be careful going up into the Bronx, be yeah, careful right, going, right, right. you know, and maybe you would see, of course, someone of color stealing something or they're in the news, mm -hmm. they get handcuffed, mm -hmm. you know, but you were able to show like, to complete the vision of like, okay, maybe this person is, is doing this, you know, maybe it's not their fault. Maybe they're being arrested because, you know, they're being, you know, targeted. And so in that you're, you're showing like the dark side and the beauty, the beauty was coming out like while bad things were happening in this movie or things that we would think like, like a scene of poverty, but it made you just like look at it and just feel some kind of empathy. Some, these people are humans, you know, these people are, maybe they just didn't have what they needed, um, the way, but they're, but in the midst of it, their spirit, they're gorgeous. You know, they're they're being honest. They're just going with what it is that they had to do. And um, unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, right now where, I mean, we've been dealing with this for, for seasons, for years. I mean, That's from right. slavery, Willie That's Lynch, right. that worked, you know, That's right. That's all, of, right. all of that stuff is not just that a person right. ends up in a situation if you if you're coming up in poverty you only have so much to work with that's right. you know that's and right. so to me this this really shows how despite um you know the lack of thereof i mean you're one of the one of the scenes mentions you know um uh this this kid he's he, his mom is like Oh, if he doesn't go to Columbia, he's gonna go to Howard. If he doesn't go to Harvard, you know, Howard's gonna Harvard. He's gonna. Go. It's like all the elite schools. You know what I mean? And a lot of times people don't see us in that light. Mm. Mm. So I love the fact that there's like a bridge between, you know, okay, you can be pulled over by a cop or you know targeted in a situation. Let's just yeah. say that we yeah. don't know how you got there. Yeah. whether it was poverty or whatever. But then, you know, you could, it, it connects. It's not like you have, well, you know, my black friend is so-and-so. It's, yeah. everybody is, is the same person. Yeah, know? yeah. There's a line. <clears throat> First of all, I think a lot of that, like, duality sits in ta writing and all of his writing, which I think is why he is, his voice is one of the most profound voices of our generation, right? Because mm -hmm. he's able um, to shine a very real and critical light at our current condition. Mm -hmm. um, there's this side of him that is the journalist mm -hmm. um, that is all about investigation and real truths. So There's also the side of him that's the poet is how can I look at these real truths and render it through a different lens? Um, and, and by a different lens, it's it's rendering, it's it's recontextualizing the language in a way that makes it palpable for us to hear. Okay. So um, I think he just does that beautifully with the, the writing. And, and interestingly enough, what you talked about also about this idea of, do you know, sort of where our community lives sort of on just spectrum and opportunity and access. He has 
this line, there's a recurring theme in the book and in the film about the ability to break your body, right? Mm -hmm. About the, the and, and how that is a result of intended policy. And the, the book was very, very in depth about this idea of policy so that we can gain a better understanding of our intent of, of how systematic our current condition as a people has been the last 400 years that we've been here in this country, right? Um, this is not by chance. Um, the whole American promise of pull up by the bootstraps was only meant for some, not That's for right. all. And, and, and we've got to, we've got to realize that and distinguish that um, in, right. in, in order to really challenge and change, right? So um, I, I think that's sort of just the, um, you know, why his writing is just so profound. And I think it gave us just so amazing source material um, to elevate and amplify visually. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and also that duality lies in an emotional part of us, um, you know, where we can't stay it's, it's weird because we have to be woke, but we can't stay angry because then you can't move forward in a light. You need help, you know, from other, you know, globally, we need help with everything. If, if, you know, there's no lights, we can't write. If we, who, yeah. so who turns on the lights, who pays, you know, who comes to my shows, who yeah. helps support. We can't just be, but it is definitely time for us to acknowledge that our community is, is strong in the powers that, you know, are, are given to us as a, as a birthright, you know, sometimes it's like, we've just been uh, so numbed and so beaten down to just think we, we don't deserve certain things. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're incapable of doing certain things. And even if you're progressive about it, okay. there's that moment where you have doubt yeah. where someone else might just be like, Oh yeah, of course I'm just doing this, but yeah. it's like, can I do that? Yeah. You know, it's just, yeah. so I just, I just really want to applaud you. First of all, as, as a black woman, mm. this happened, I you know, I don't go too far in depth because sometimes I, I have to just pretend like I'm, I'm just an artist, you know, so I can get my art done. But at a certain point I have to go, wait a minute, that seems a lot harder <laughs> than this other person. Um, sometimes I think about it later, like, damn, that was I had to jump so many hurdles. Yeah. So I, I'm just wondering if you, you know, if what was that process for you? Did you run into anything mm. in trying to bring this into uh, fruition and like, you know? Well, I'll say this is that it's interesting because I um, was pitching this project theatrically um, early on. Um, and uh, to other places, institutions to develop um, and, and wasn't getting much traction. Um, so then in 2016, when I took the position as executive producer at the Apollo, I was now in a position of power to say, you know what, I'm gonna do this project. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I didn't have to wait for anyone to say, yes, we, you, we will allow you to do it or yes, here's the funding or yes, right? It was it was myself in a position of power to say yes and 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 therefore um, able to rally my institution um, around this um, you know what I felt was an extremely um, progressive art making progressive community building idea um, and you know I, I think that's where sort of the shift I think in in power and access came when I became in a position of power to then green light uh, my own project. Um, and, 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 and therefore there was a, um, how do I say, uh, um, do you know, a proof of concept, right? Like now people can mm -hmm. see exactly what it is and get excited by it. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I think that was, um, was very difficult, you know, and I look at some of my other colleagues who have different points of access, as you stated, right. Um, for whatever reason, whether it was because of family connections or whatever, someone had opened a door. Now that's not to say other people haven't opened a door because absolutely they have for me um, to, to sit in this seat now, to have the experiences that I've had. Um, but specifically on this project, um, yeah, there were hurdles. Um, there were hurdles and, and thankfully um, we are able to be kind of where we are now 
Um, this is a great spot. I mean, I can only, <laughs> you know, I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, to be able to sit back and, you know, talk about we're going to watch the premiere together. The premiere oh. and... Italy, right? It's so funny because, you know, I'm so used to like, you know, opening night. So we get all dressed up, you know, we'll be at the Apollo in our, in our, in our fancy chairs, you know, in our like, you know, dresses and drinking wine and champagne. But it was none of that, right? We were like in our... I know. <laughs> so fighting through, you know, <laughs> yeah, the reality of just being in the COVID too. I know, just... I know. It's just really a lot, but, but it's, I mean, more power to you. We got to get things done. Come on. We got to look at one thing I'll say is that, you know, um, with all that has been canceled during this time of COVID, one thing that cannot be canceled is culture, right? Like, mm -hmm. and we will continue and find a way to either make art, um, Avi, look, hear your show, <laughs> right? Have conversations, connect, um, and build culture. Right. That's that is one thing that is a, a baseline. We will always find a way. And I think even making this film during this time of COVID, you know, is a is another, you know, just a, a, a proof of that. You know, we'll always find a way to make art um, and to connect with people. And, and, and that was indicative of this film. You know, we made this film in the midst and the height of kind of COVID. And we shot in over six different cities, um, shot over 20 different people. Um, worked with over 20 different artists, right, um, on camera to make this happen. And it was a it was a major feat, but we knew that there was an urgent conversation to be had now. Um, and this was something Absolutely. that could not, this could not wait until next year, mm -hmm. 21, until, you know, the vaccine is out and bans are lifted. No, this was something we had to do now. And, you know, I'm thankful HBO believed in it, that as well. So, um, you know, four you months later, here we are. You included the uh, the peaceful protests in there, um, not so peaceful protests that were needed, you know, um, in there. And it was just, it's so current, you know. I mean, it is so current with Brianna uh, Taylor in there and just, you know, all of anyone who had passed away at that time, you know, which is a few months ago your turnaround time is is ridiculous Camilla. yeah <laughs> it's like I have, to, I have to give that up to our team um we had an incredible team um and they believed because i think this timeline is a bit unprecedented for what we accomplished um they they believed and and worked tirelessly to get this done um and get this done with the amount of time but also never sacrificing quality the graphics, the the flow of the way things went from one thing to another, it really drew you in as a even even if you're not an African American or, or you know of African diaspora, you felt like compelled to watch this. You know, mm -hmm. the way you you work the animation into it, the paintings, the yeah. colors, yeah. just just exquisite exquisite and it, it shows so many sides of of our culture our legacy our history um yeah just that's history. really so great you know it was always an interest to be um like i said when describing this was always thinking like the words tapestry and collage mm. were the biggest um kind of ringers in my brain you know about tapestry of voices of actors a tapestry visually um, of visuals, um, a tapestry of, you know, the opportunity to use like contemporary artists that I admire, like Titus Kafar, Lisa Butler, Kalita Rawls, Lorna Simpson, you know, Dr. Fahal Mubiko, using those folks because, you know, as part of the tapestry, because I feel like, you know, their work also tells a story of our people now. And so yes. how do we, um, how can we use that to visually amplify? Um, so, you know, uh, I, I, I love that kind of thing, right? I love when there's like so many different, like mixed media. I love the, you know, our opportunity when we were using, you know, Instagram footage um, and docu footage from like the fifties of black family, right. where it's like, 
oh, that right. feels familiar. Like the only time I've seen footage like that is with my family, you know? Right. My grandma, or that could be my grandpa, you know? Um, Absolutely. That's the feeling that 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 we see ourselves in this film. But, 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 and also the world sees us in this film and ultimately also sees their own humanity reflected back at them. And that right. was my core mission. Um, you yeah. got that. You mm -hmm. definitely accomplished that. It There was a sense of intimacy as well. You know, like you were in a person's house with them. Yes. But yeah. like you said, you could relate. Even if you are not, um, you know, of African descent, you could relate because everybody has a relationship with their dad or their grandma, or if someone lost someone, you know, that feeling of loss was there. The feeling of love, you know, just, absolutely absolutely uh, beautiful can you uh tell our viewers when this is when exactly this is going to air absolutely um it's going to air november 21st on hbo and hbo max and then we'll continue streaming on hbo max so even if you miss it on the 21st you should be able to watch it at any point on hbo max I'm so psyched. I saw it already, you know, last night at the premiere by myself with, uh, you know, with you guys online. Yeah. It was fun too. But I, I really look forward to seeing it again and seeing uh, the world's reaction, you know, especially at a time where it's important to express how we feel and, and not let that, um, you know, Black Lives Matter shouldn't be like a fad or fashion. You know, it, we have to remember That's right. because somehow it always seems to just go back to hell, you know, right. and then it's like we forget. And I think there, it's important to have positive ways to That's right. remind, That's right. jumpstart our and also, and also remind, this is a continuum, right? I, there's a line also from the film, um, this is old for black people. This isn't new for black people, right? Black Lives Matter is a continuum. Oh for from the 60s Absolutely. and the 70s right from also the protests that happened in the 30s the movement after reconstruction Absolutely. the abolitionism so we've been fighting here for a second <laughs> oh man um, but oh, man. but there is um you know the, the, one of the one, one of the lessons i think taking from it is that like how do we find our place in the all of it even amongst mm -hmm. the struggle um, mm -hmm. Because amongst that struggle, we bore some beautiful gems. Our music Absolutely. comes out of struggle, right? Absolutely. Our storytelling comes out of struggle. There is such a richness of who we are, a passion of who we are, because mm -hmm. of, of, of what we have been so resilient through. Um, so there is, you know, it is, it is all, how do, we, how do we live within the all of it? While yes, absolutely demanding justice, but, um, but also living within the all of it. Mm -hmm. And thank you for connecting all of these famous uh, people that we look up to. You know, you had Angela Davis in, with the fro, but then now, you know, just in her beautiful self now, and, and you know, just seeing how through time, how we change, but how the beauty continues. Mm. Because, you know, sometimes I look in the mirror, I'm like, damn, my chin is starting. <laughs> but I saw that and I was like, she she looks different, but she looks so beautiful just now. Just regal, just it's, regal. What? You saw that fro then and then you see her now sitting there with that glow. I was it was like boom. It was it was so exciting and inspiring to see Angela Bassett. Uh, Felicia Rashad and Oprah just looking so mm. amazing, right? And then you, you know, you gave the tribute to Chadwick Boseman, which was that still. I'm, I'm, I'm still dark from that because you know he just touched us in a way, and I'm still finding out how many movies he's in that I had no idea that he had done. So thank you for that. And and I was going to say one of my favorite shows, Insecure, you had one of the uh, uh, supporting oh, boyfriends. Kendrick. Kendrick. Yes, I yes. love him. So you've got like the, the young ones and you've got the season together. And I thought that that, that was so amazing. Maybe that's a good part of, uh, you know, the times that we're in with the technology. But it's just amazing. Thank you for that and you must feel crazy about that too because 
I, I do, you know, there's a little bit of like, oh my God, all these people are in this and I admire them all incredibly. Um, and everyone came together to tell this sort of unified story. And you could just feel the love, not even just the love, but the urgency and the passion when people, you know, signed up and came on board to do this. Um, you know, and, and, and the grace that people gave, um, you know, we, we dealt a bunch even because we were shooting remotely. Um, like I said, we shot in six different cities, but I couldn't be in every city. So right. in a lot of cases, I was directing remotely. Um, wow. you know, we had to deal with technology issues. I remember with Wendell Pierce in Atlanta, Yes, like it was, it was one of the most incredible shoots, but also the moment where like technology was not on our side. He couldn't hear right. me. I couldn't hear him. There was something beeping in his ear and it was like, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, oh, man. This is a disaster. <laughs> um, but it was so much beauty because you know what, there was a point he just was like, you know what, I got it. And we, we, we stripped away some layers of technology and he was like, we're, we're just gonna do it like this. Mm. And, um, and you know, that's again, another one. I mean, I love every single scene, but another one that's really special to me with him and Michelle Wilson. Mm, so beautiful, so beautiful. Yeah. Well, listen, I don't wanna take up any more of your time. Everyone, please, please tune in. And what is that time again? And where we're gonna- 8 p.m. November 21st. HBO streaming on HBO Max between the world and me. Yay. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. For, yes, for everything. And I'm just, I look forward to the next and yeah. to just to see what you come up with next. Please keep in touch. You, you know. look amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. God bless. Be safe. And thank you for blessing the music. Um, because it's so integral. That was very important to me and it's always been. Um, so I'm always blessed to have you as a collaborator. So thank you, Mimi. Thank you. And thank Jason Moran. He did a- Jason Moran, job. yes. Killed it. Killed it. All right, my dear. All right. Well, I'm out. Good luck with everything. And we'll be in touch. We'll be in yeah. touch. Yes. Yeah. Choose is to choose.